the priestess entered an underground chamber and there went into a trance. In this trance, she would give prophecies that were evocative, intriguing, and often surprisingly accurate. She was in a, an altered state. Occasionally, she's described as chewing laurel leaves, and people have commented that this may have had a, a psychotropic effect. There is other evidence of psychotropic effects. In 1998, a geological team discovered two fault lines running under the temple at Delphi, which led to underground stores of ethylene gas. In small quantities, ethylene produces a mild euphoria and is the key ingredient in the dangerous practice of glue sniffing. In large quantities, the gas is a powerful hallucinogen that produces visions and sometimes incoherent raving. This ambiguity may be the key to the oracle's success. The basic principle of a good prophet or a good oracle is keep it vague. Allow for a variety of different futures to be taken as fulfillment of prophecy. And the poetry that came from the Oracle of Delphi was very much like that. It was often rather vague and was open to interpretation. Like Delphi, the cave of the Sibyl was also underground, connected to volcanic gases and fault lines. If you ingest hallucinogens, the brain interprets that as something external to itself, even though we know, of course, it's internal. But that only adds to the mystery and, and the overall sense of something special going on. Yet the fact remains that the Delphic Oracle seemed to accurately and specifically predict the fame of Socrates years before he was known, the defeat of the Persian invasion of Greece in 480 BC, and Alexander the Great's conquest of the known world. Ancient man had a very, very sophisticated mindset, and I think it represents an inconsistency on our part to embrace his rationalism, his historiography, his engineering, to embrace all these things and yet to make no room whatsoever for ancient man's interest in prophecy and oracles. The accuracy of these ancient oracles is not just a moot point because these doomsday prophecies apparently referred to our own time and some find disturbing confirmation of the 2012 doomsday in the calendar of the ancient Mayans, which gives a far more specific timetable for apocalypse, including the year, the month, and the day. The Mayan calendar seems to say that the world will end in 2012. It's a startlingly precise prediction from a culture that took its calendar very seriously. The Mayan civilization flourished in Central America from the 6th to the 9th century AD. They were obsessed with timekeeping. Their calendar was incredibly precise, more accurate even than our own. Its interlocking time scales of lunar, solar, and planetary cycles could accurately predict a solar eclipse thousands of years into the future. The Mayans were kind of like shamanic scientists, and they were obsessed with time, synchronicity, and consciousness, and they spent like a thousand years, going back to even previous civilizations, trying to put together a model of when this big transformation was going to take place. The calendar is also prophetic. In the 8th century AD, it predicted that white-skinned, bearded gods would arrive from across the sea on March 5, 1519. On that precise date, Cortes and his conquistadors arrived in the New World. Was it coincidence, or was the calendar prophetically accurate? The answer matters, for the Mayan calendar also predicts the end of the world as we know it on the date that the Mayans called Hunab Ku. On the winter solstice 2012, December 21st, the sun rises within the dark rift at the center of the Milky Way. 
and they call this dark rift a cosmic mother, or they're also apparently referred to it as a black hole. And only in the last five years have Western astronomers discovered that there is actually an enormous black hole at the center of the Milky Way, which is at the center of our, of our galaxy. Modern astronomers concur with the ancient Mayans. On December 21st, 2012, the Earth will be in exact alignment with the Sun and the center of the Milky Way galaxy, a galactic event that takes place only once every 25,800 years. No one knows what effect this extraordinary alignment will have on the Earth, but the Mayans believed it would be dire. Geophysicists have a theory that is strikingly similar to the events predicted by the Mayan alignment. This phenomenon is called pole shift, in which the entire mantle of the Earth would shift in a matter of days, perhaps hours, changing the position of the North and South Pole, causing worldwide disaster. Earthquakes would rock every continent. Massive tsunamis would inundate coastal cities. It would be the ultimate planetary catastrophe. As unlikely as this theory seems, it is backed by science. Albert Einstein first suggested it in 1955. And a new study from Princeton University reveals that the poles have shifted before. The North Pole rested in the middle of the Pacific 800 million years ago, placing Alaska at the equator. Even if this pole shift took place slowly over years, it would result in global climate change and shifting sea levels. If it took place rapidly, it would mean planet-wide disaster and mass extinction of species. On the other side of the world, the 2012 date also emerges in prophecy. According to one theory, the identical doomsday date can be found in China's oldest text, the I Ching or Book of Changes. The I Ching is usually used for personal fortune-telling. You ask a question of the text, then you toss three coins. If they are mostly tails, you draw a straight line. If they are mostly heads, you draw a broken line. This is repeated six times until the questioner has a series of six straight and broken lines called a hexagram. There's 64 possible combinations. And there are little texts appended to each of these hexagrams, and that gives you some reading on the future. The questioner looks up his hexagram in an index and finds a prophecy. The remarkable thing about the I Ching is that if you pose a question to this oracle, you will discover that you receive an answer that is astoundingly appropriate to the question being asked. Advice can range from relationships to travel to career guidance. But scientific rationalists counter that the evocative language of the I Ching only makes it seem accurate. But only in the past decades has the ancient I Ching become an oracle of doom. The story begins with a controversial researcher named Terence McKenna. Terence McKenna was kind of the uh, subcultural Timothy Leary of the 1980s and 90s. He did these kind of mathematical graphings with the I Ching and turned it into a kind of map of time. Before his death in 2000, 